As Canada joins other countries in banning the social media app TikTok from government devices, China is firing back. The country says a U.S. government ban on the app reflects America's insecurities. As of yesterday, the White House gave all federal agencies 30 days to wipe TikTok from all government devices. The Canadian government is following suit today, with the Chinese-owned video-sharing app no longer available on government-issued mobile devices. TikTok has questioned the bans, saying it has not been given an opportunity to answer questions, and governments were cutting themselves off from a platform beloved by millions. Well, joining us today to talk more about the privacy and security concerns around TikTok is Mr. Brian Hogley, a cybersecurity expert and CEO of Side Channel. Mr. Hogley, welcome to Forum Daily. Uh, thank you for having me. So what do we know so far about the key security concerns around TikTok that led to these bans that we're seeing in the U.S., the EU, and now in Canada? So this has been a story that's been developing for, for quite some time. The concern is not necessarily the app itself, but that the app, TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance, which is domiciled and headquartered inside of China. And the concern from a national security standpoint stems from the data that TikTok, the application itself, can have access to on your phone. But then, then that data is stored inside of and controlled by ByteDance. And we know that the CCP or the Chinese Communist Party has their activities and their abilities to reach into, coerce, influence, and access data on companies that are domiciled or headquartered in China. So this becomes a national security threat concern, at least from the United States standpoint, that foreign adversaries have access to data on U.S. citizens. And if those U.S. citizens happen to be government employees and TikTok's installed on a government phone, who has access to the data that that application is installed on? A privacy concern indeed. Now, on the other hand, TikTok says it is open to discussing how it protects privacy. Uh, so what sort of measures does the company say it takes to ensure user privacy? So they've been actually discussing this for quite some time as well. They've been stating that they've been open to discussions. They've been working, trying to work with the U.S. government. They moved their databases to uh, an oracle, trying to make a show of good faith around how this was not the way that they were being perceived, where data was being accessed by the Chinese Communist Party. But I don't think they really made the efforts that they've said. I don't think they've been as open as, as they have, because the permissions on the applications themselves haven't really changed from the default. So when installed, the application has access to your contact information, to your camera, to your phone, to your location. And all this type of information could be very detrimental to the operations of a government, not China, in knowing where those people are, who they're talking to, who they're around, what they're accessing. Some concerning revelations there. Now, uh, from access to actually gathering information, we know the Chief Information Officer of Canada pointed to a review warning of TikTok's data collection methods. So what sort of data does this app actually collect and for what use? So really, I mean, the application, when you install it, if you don't read the permissions that you're authorizing, once you click the install on your Android or your iPhone, it actually has a pretty pervasive amount of access to your phone or metadata as well. I mean, again, your location, who you're near. I mean, your Bluetooth can pick up devices that you're around, networks that you're on, places that you've been, who you're in contact with, your own contacts, pictures, media. There's really a treasure trove. I mean, think about how much access and what we rely on our phones for on a daily basis, the application has a lot of access to that. Other applications that are installed on the phone are these things that me as an individual and my privacy, do I want another person, another agency, another government to be able to know? Do I want to know, have them know about private activity that I am conducting on my own phone? No, it's not. So there's quite a bit of data that can be extracted out of these apps. And again, it's being hosted in a country that is not ours. Uh, it's not Canadian, and we don't have the influence uh, to be able to make the changes that we would expect to see uh, on a company that would have access to data such as this. Just about a minute left here, but for our viewers who may want to protect uh, their information from TikTok or other social media apps, what sort of advice would you have for them in order to do that? Well, like any other social media application, if you're not using it, really uninstall it. But if you are going to use it and you want to use it for the entertainment value that it is, because it does have some entertainment value, um, do review what the permissions are. Does it need access to your location? Does it need access to your contact list? You have the ability inside of your Android or Apple device to be able to go in and change those. Remember, when you installed the application initially, 
You accepted the default permissions that it was looking for. You have the opportunity to go back in and change those. So if you're not going to delete the application entirely, do at least remove the, the permissions that you don't feel comfortable with. Some good advice to consider. Again, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you.